Tim. Yeah, as you can see, 10 cars were set on fire. There were shop fronts smashed. Police fired warning shots to disperse an angry crowd. So, hands up, is the president right to highlight problems that Sweden has had with immigration? We can speak to Ilva Johansson. She's Swedish Minister for Employment and Integration, which is interesting in itself. I've never heard of a, a Minister of Integration. Is that specific to Sweden? Well, I don't know, actually. Right. Well, let me read you um, some of the comments that I read this morning in, in some of the newspapers. This is from Benjamin Doucet. He's an appointed member of a local bo board in Rinkeby. This is the place where the riots were. And he says, um, the situation in Rinkeby is not good. The police don't have control over the area. If you said you had a problem with integration in Sweden, you'd be called a racist. Well, that's not true. Uh, of course, there are problems with integration, but uh, you have to realize, I mean, of course, we are uh, a society on Earth. We are not paradise. People commit crimes. Uh, we have that problem. But when we compare Sweden to most other countries, we have a low level of crimes and we have a low level of violent, uh, deathly violence. And we have quite a strong society and, and we are quite well equipped, I should say, to, to handle also those challenges that we are facing. Last year, Sweden, a country of nine and a half million people, granted residency to 150,000 immigrants in one year. That is an awful lot to deal with. And if you look at the polls at the moment, it's the Sweden Democrats, the anti-immigration party that is on the rise. And it could be, they say, the biggest party by 2018. So... That would suggest that a lot of people have concerns. Well, I don't think that the racist party will be that big and they're not rising in polls anymore. Uh, and I mean, of course, uh, having these uh, so many refugees in a short time, of course, that uh, causes some problems. We have huge housing problems. We have problems uh, with teachers, uh, not enough, uh, enough teachers in school. And we have, of course, challenges to help people to learn Swedish come into the labor market. But we cannot see a connection between uh, crimes and immigration. We have been an immigration country for 20 years. Uh, with a, uh, we're taking a lot of immigrants to Sweden and in the same time the crime level has gone down. So this is not, uh, we can't really see that connection. But those newcomers who come to my country, they are human beings as, as all we already live here. And some people commit crimes and that's of course a problem. But most people don't commit crimes and that's the same for us who already live here and those are newcomers. Minister, I wanted to put to you something that Nigel Farage, the former leader of the um, UK Independence Party, has said about Sweden. He has called Stockholm the rape capital of Europe, possibly even the rape capital of the world. His implication is that actually with an influx of immigrants and particularly a lot of young male immigrants, the crime rate, particularly around sexual crimes, has risen in the capital. Well, there is... Uh, he's not... Uh... I should say that he's not really know what he's talking about. Well, we, when we make surveys uh, about uh, if any woman has been, uh, uh, if there's been a rape towards her and sexual harassment, we can see that the level is going down and going down and going down. But we encourage women uh, to uh, actually report to the police and we have also broadened the scope of what we uh, define as a rape because we would like every woman because every rape is one rape too much we will encourage every woman to report to the police so we have a high level of reporting to the police and it's good that they report and of course it's bad if rape is committed but when we make service uh, the actual level of rapes is not high in Sweden right I, I realise you're not the foreign minister, but I want to ask you a question of diplomacy. How surprised were you by Donald Trump's comments over the weekend and by the perception, at least, that he was picking a rather curious row with somebody who is an ally of the United States? I was very surprised and I think all, all Swedes were. Does it anger what did you? you make of it? Why do you think he did it? Well, you must ask him. Uh, of course, the president <laughs> can say whatever he wants, but uh, I was very surprised and it, it started to make a lot of jokes here in Sweden uh, about, uh, about that speech.
Yeah, it gave rise to quite a lot on Twitter, didn't it? Uh, I, I have to say, yes. Cathy, I did enjoy reading some of the Twitter uh, entries over the last few days, but, uh, but there we are. Uh, Minister, thank you very much for being with us this evening. It's very good of you to join us. Now, it was around about this time yesterday, we were talking about the French presidential candidate 